Much like every worker on the job site, every piece of equipment must serve a purpose. Still, all too often, workers don't look before they leap when using machinery on the job site. These actions are all not only irresponsible, but super dangerous. Taking an extra step to familiarize yourself with a piece of equipment can make the difference of preventing serious injuries and even fatalities. One school is driving home better safety decisions. Here to tell us all about it is Dana Atkinson, Research Associate at the Georgia Tech OSHA Training Institute. Dana, welcome to the show. It's really great to have you on today. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about health and safety at the job site. There's so much going on, especially when you talk about all these summer months. Uh, yeah, there's lots of things. OSHA's uh, in flux right now, but there's a lot of focus that they're trying to have on, on, on the job sites, uh, both general industry and construction, and we're just trying to keep up. So what are we doing a lot right now? Is, is there more things that we need to focus with the, the construction workers that they really need to be thinking about that they haven't in the past? What's changing? Well, there's a little bit of a technology change and push coming through with BIM and other things and, and the heavy equipment and other things that are going on out there. Uh, OSHA's brought on a little bit of a focus on uh, the workers' uh, boots on the ground in regards to heat and exposures and uh, uh, the, their well-being in regards to the time they spend outdoors. Um, that's one of the focus groups we've been working on at the current time. Um, the cranes are always a big thing, the boom. I mean, outside my office here, you can see at least five or six different tower cranes in three different directions. So in the combination of those things coming together and the boom coming through and the banks coming through with the money, uh, uh, things are moving very quickly. So do you think management workers all need to work together to really focus on keeping workers safe at the job site? Is this what we really need to focus on? Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the push for production will always kind of make that whole issue with safety kind of take a little bit of a backseat. But this is really the time where they have to be uh, adamant on the aspect that they need to address those issues, especially when the boom comes through. You start getting those less experienced workers that come through that think they know or you make the assumption that they know. And uh, that's where you start having those gaps in the process that, of knowledge transfer. That's an interesting point that you say when you say that. They think they know because that always scares me because sometimes they have this training, they forget, and they start doing really, mm -hmm. sometimes I want to say, almost dumb things. They forget, and that's when the biggest injuries occur. True. There's, 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 there's two types of training. There's the formal training and informal. The informal is going to happen or not, whether or not you want it to happen or not. You have to be, uh, be proactive in dealing with that and establish the, uh, the normal protocols instead of that normal, normalization and deviation that you get through informal training peer to peer. Uh, and especially the new guy, the experienced one, the one that's trying to do the best job without the most knowledge, uh, the institutional knowledge that they should have. Uh, and it makes it difficult, especially when you start pushing production and production starts becoming a paramount, as it always is, uh, unfortunately, because that's what we get paid for. But uh, uh, we're trying to work on that and, and balance it out. We're seeing a lot of uh, incidents occurring. It's not decreasing. It seems like we get more accidents in the summer months because we're rushing these projects. How do we get them to focus on being safer and avoiding, you know, when using hazardous materials or other things like that? What, what do we got to do there? Well, it's the longer days. It's the longer hours. They're out in the daylight. You have more time to get work done. You can go through and push these things through. Uh, as the construction guys like to do, they come out and get going at the crack of dawn. Um, they have to be uh, more diligent in making realizations of breaking the day up uh, and being adamant on when tasks change and jobs change to uh, uh, address the protocols that are needed to do the job and don't make any assumptions. Uh, but anytime you have a boom and you have more numbers and more people, you're going to see that uptick because, like I said, you're going to have this less experienced people coming in or people who are doing the quote unquote fake it till you make it uh, in certain aspects to try and, you know, just just get that check. I hate to think that we have this economic boom in construction and that leads to more, you know, injuries. But are we using and leveraging technology to kind of help us, you know, offset this boom to kind of help them kind of step back and say, let's use the advantages of where we are with technology now to maybe, you know, avoid some of these injuries? Absolutely. Um, BIM is not only for construction, but it's for work process. Uh, any part of your work process from the building to the, the task to the operations uh, should be done in the, in the design phase. And if that is the real issue with uh, design bit building and using these technologies, they're really much more effective in modeling in the beginning parts of your process to understand how you're going to put these projects together what tools you'll need to operate safely, and what scope you want to try and keep your people in so that they don't try and do too much. 
Are there other things we need to be thinking about, materials, things that are on the job site that we need to be kind of looking for right now when we're doing this big boom? True, true. Uh, 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 being down here in Atlanta, it's the issue with, with the heat and the idea that, you know, just suck it up. You'll be all right. It's, it's, it's not that hot. It was that hot for me when I worked there. Oh, you my gosh. It, you're making it, me it, laugh it, right now thinking that. I, I, it, it just sent how they how they do the things here, you know, and the rationalization of some of the chip on their shoulder about what they're going to do when it's really very simple. You just say, you know, look, water breaks, cool vests, ventilation uh, breaks in the work. You know, you, you can't all get it get it done by Tuesday. You know, you, you got to be able to, to uh, uh, take care of your people. But um, this is the this is the structure, the mentality we do with the construction. So we're industry. looking at we all this. We we got to get smarter, faster. I mean, is is that mentality is a bad thing? But now we got to take a step back and say, look, you've got a lot of big equipment out there. You got a lot of workers mm -hmm. on the job site. You got to think about safety. What's the big advice as we're wrapping up here? You want to give everybody to say, look, construction is important, but safety is even more important. The, the, the deal is with safety is, is, you know, when someone creates a company, at how big does that company have to get before they start considering safety? And that's all relative. And it's, is, it, is, it, is it you have that cultural moment of a humanitarian issue or an economic issue or a legality issue that forces you to focus on safety? You have to really kind of uh, – everybody – gets to it at a different point. Uh, I can't go out there and preach it on the street. They have to come to us. Um, it's, it's very difficult. And sometimes I feel like in the classes I'm preaching to the choir. When people come to us, they've already in certain instances made that rationalization or had that epiphany. Um, that is the gap. That is the big issue. And there's lots of people out there that because we say OSHA and we are affiliated with OSHA, we are the bad guy. We are a consultation service. We offer consultation for small businesses. We offer training programs, and we even started an academic program of professional masters in occupational safety and health here at Georgia Tech. We're trying to address the gap that exists out there in the world in regards to people focusing on safety and making it part of the top three, production, marketing, and safety all on the same level. Dana, I wish we had more time to talk. Thank you for spending so much time with us today on Safety Zone. You're very welcome. I enjoyed it very much. Hopefully I'll see you again. All right. Take care. That's our Safety Zone for today.